everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Barker Designs. I've got a really fun Halloween card for you today. I am featuring the Bewitching Bundle. Um, this is a stamp punch bundle. It has a really fun hat. Um, I think the hat is probably designed to be a witch hat, but let me tell you, I've seen it all over Pinterest as other kinds of hats. So um, this is a great punch that I think you could use all year round. Um, we're going to do all kinds of techniques today for this card. Oh, one other thing that I'm doing, the sentiment. This bewitching stamp set doesn't have any words. So I pulled my paper pumpkin uh, stamp set. This came in this month's paper pumpkin, and I'm just using that little happy Halloween right there. All right, well, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is make that background. And you might be saying, where is that background from? Well, it's from this. This is one of our little treat bags, which is lovely, but I wanted to use it for my card. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut that front off. Now you could, if you're making treat bags, let's see if I can get this off. What you could do is decorate the treat bag like this. I wanted to make a card. It's fun to send Halloween cards. Um, it's unexpected, I think. People aren't expecting to get a Halloween card from you. Um, so a Halloween card, it's just a fun little treat to send somebody. All right, now because my scissor work, I'm sure isn't perfect, I'm gonna take my trimmer and just cut off those edges so that they're straight and, you know, not so wonky. There you go. Okay, now we're going to need some grid paper. And we're going to use one of our new lovely in colors called Orchid Oasis. And we're going to need a blending brush. All right. And we're just going to go to town blending this color all the way. I'm going to start at, let's see, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So it's a little bit of an ombre look. All right, now I just re-inked my pad, so it's gonna be really juicy. Now I'm gonna start over here and then work my way down. I don't wanna set my um, blending brush straight onto my paper because sometimes it'll leave kind of a hard smashed edge there at the beginning. And uh, I don't want that. So I always like to start off the paper. And I'm gonna keep starting at the top so that the top is darker than the bottom. All right, I'm gonna grab, let's see, to hold my um, to hold my piece in place, I'm just gonna use this block so that I don't get my fingers on it. All right, I'm gonna work my way down here. Always starting at the top and working down so that the top is much darker than the, the bottom. All right, once you have that look that you're going for, there we go, looks kind of like a night sky. The next thing we're gonna do is take a little bit of um, craft white ink. I'm gonna squirt a little bit on here. And actually, before I do that, there's something else I'm gonna do. Let's, we're gonna do that last. I'm gonna take my dark starry sky stamp and blend. And I'm going to flick some dark splatters on there. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get to that white craft ink. I'm going to take my aqua painter and I'm going to squirt a little bit of water here and add it to this so that it's white. Looks like I have a little bit of orange left in my brush from the last time I used it, but I think we'll be okay. And then I'm just going to flick like that. Make sure you cover your workspace and don't have anything important up here because even though I have my grid paper, I still am getting white craft ink everywhere. All right, so clean your brush really well. Clean off your block and some Dawn dish soap will get your block perfectly clean, so don't worry about that. And let's set it aside to dry. Now I do wanna show you something. You may not notice it, but right here you can see, like I had some shooting stars or something. Well, I accidentally took a piece of cardstock and brushed it across there before it was dry. So that's why that looks like that. I kind of like it. So if you want some shooting stars, just take a piece of 
cardstock and just you know loosely drag it across your uh, your your piece. But I'm gonna leave it for now like that. All right, we're gonna do some stamping. Let's bring over the Stamparatus. I like to use the Stamparatus um, when I want to make sure I get a nice solid black image. And you know I'm gonna put my square on here. And this is a stitched rectangle or stitched square from the Stylus Shape dies. It's the second largest. And then I'm going to take my stamp and put it right where I want it. Okay. I just got that a little bit wet from our little piece. I didn't set it far enough over. All right. So now take your memento black. And we're going to stamp it a couple times to get a nice, solid black. See, the first time I stamped it, didn't do so well. So I'm going to ink it again, stamp it again, and ooh, that looks good. It looks like I need to do a little bit more on this foot. So let's do it one more time. Let's see. Let me make sure I get the right foot. And lay it down. Wow, that looks amazing. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's do our hat. We're gonna do that in pumpkin pie on basic white. And let's see, my hat is hiding over here. Now, when you're gonna do a punch, you wanna look to see how it punches. I always try to kind of see how best it would be to stamp my hat. So I think maybe I'll do it kind of down here in this corner. Sometimes you have to cut off some of your excess cardstock to get your punch to fit around it right. So I try to really plan ahead to see where I should be stamping it so that I can get it in there right. There we go. All right, now we've got one more stamping thing to do and we're gonna do actually some embossing. So I've got my basic black cardstock and let me bring over all my embossing goodies. I'm gonna use my embossing buddy to release any of that um, static cling that might be on there. The static holds the um, powders sometimes in place where you don't want them. So really rub it with your embossing buddy. All right, now my white craft pad seems to be the juiciest on the edges. So I'm gonna stamp this right here in the middle. Perfect. Close that up. Let's bring over well, you know what? I don't think we need that because I've got my, I put my embossing powder in a little in a little Tupperware type container, so I don't have to use that on this. Tap off any extra. Let's do it again to make sure. See how those stick like that? So if you just kind of flick and then take your little paintbrush and if you see any still sticking, just wipe them away. All right. Bring over your heat tool. And we've got these awesome reverse tweezers that'll keep you from burning your hand with our heat tool. So it's gonna take about, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds to get to the right temperature. And as soon as it does, the white starts to turn shiny. Okay? really hard to show on a video especially when my cord is trapped and won't let me bring my heat tool over any farther all right i think that looks pretty good okay so now we're going to cut this out with a little label i'm going to bring over my mini cut and emboss machine this is perfect for these kind of little cuts this is actually a banner from the Stylus shape dies, which is what we used for the stitched rectangle. Let's get that on there, centered. Carefully lay down your plate and run that through. Okay, I think we're ready to put it all together. Um, we are going to actually, yeah, we can go ahead. We'll punch those stars here in a second. I'm going to use some dimensionals 
to put this here. But you know what? We've got to color her. We can't leave her stockings boring black and white. So I'm going to use Orchid Oasis for those little stripes. Like that. And then we'll use Daffodil Delight for the buckles. Aren't those so cute, those little witch feet? Now, we've got our dimensional ready to go. We'll put that right there. And we'll put our sentiment across the bottom with some dimensionals. Right there along the bottom. All right, I'm gonna take my Orchid Oasis metallic ribbon Tie just a little bow. And, whoops, many glue dot. And like that. All right. So now let's bring over our card and let's see if our our piece is dry, I think it is. See, we've got a little Milky Way there. That's from me setting my Stamparatus <laughs> down into the wet ink. Yeah, I can't seem to get this right. Um, I can't seem to not smear it, but that's okay on this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We want it to be kind of a spooky night looking piece. All right, now twist it kind of just to the side just a little bit. All right, now we'll take our little piece right here and put that there. Now, there's something else I wanna add to the front. We're gonna take pumpkin pie glimmer ribbon, glimmer washi ribbon, and I'm gonna just kind of add about three strips to a piece of pumpkin pie. And then I'm gonna take my punch and we're gonna punch out some stars, okay? All right, I'm gonna take my liquid glue, add a few dots since we've got six stars, one, two, three, four, five, Let's see where that last one should go. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to set these down. Actually, that wasn't a, hey, the glue looks like um, the white dots that we splattered. And we'll do that little one right there. And I think maybe one right here. Take your pick tool, putty end works real well. Picking those up and laying them down. Okay, one more thing for our card. The inside, um, this is a dark card base. I try to remember to put basic white pieces in my dark card bases so I have place to write. And I'm gonna stamp that cute little spider right there on that piece. And then we'll just put it on the inside like that and there you have it a really fun halloween card to send to a friend or maybe a grandchild or a niece or nephew i think that would be fun for anybody to get in the mail make sure you click the link here on youtube i've got two other bewitching projects for you and uh, let me know if you have any questions thanks everybody have a great day bye bye